Um, welcome to my vlog. I felt like making a vlog. I haven't made many videos lately. I've just been too busy. So, um, instead, I'm just going to show you the shit show that is my life. Um, I'm just walk around with this camera for a little while. Let me know. I've just been crazy busy. Um, you know, and it's frustrating. I kind of wanted to vent out a little of the frustration I've been feeling lately. And that stems from what psychologists call seasonal affective disorder. It's a real deal. And um, it pisses me off. I actually get fucking depressed when it is uh, shitty weather for extended periods of time. Extended periods of time. And that's essentially what living in Colorado is. So anybody that's considering moving to Colorado, you need to consider the weather fucking sucks here. It really sucks. Um, the only place that I think I've lived where the weather was worse was northwestern panhandle of Nebraska. That was the only place that I was just like, holy fuck, people actually fucking live here? And people still live there. And they don't, I don't know. I think part of it is you're born where you're born and some people never really travel or leave home and so they don't really know what they're missing like when they go to a place like Spain or uh, you know Southern California Florida South Texas what have you well, the weather's nice most of the time you got sunny days like California in San Diego it rains like 10 times a year I mean, 10 days out of the year you'll get a rainstorm and everybody's excited because it's so rare that you even see it and it just comes and goes dumps a bunch of rain on you and then back to sunny days again so um but out here in colorado we don't get that shit at all you'd think we would but up here in the mountains it's not like that at all it's it's it's, it's an eight month winter basically and then a really 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 short summer because you spend all of your time in the summer months in the nice grow season just busting your ass because you can't do shit in the winter so you just sit there twiddling your thumbs wishing you had something to do some way to make money so and you have all these ideas in your head and you're just like okay as soon as it gets warm as soon as the fucking snow melts as soon as it stops raining as soon as the wind stops blowing god damn it but it doesn't it just just keeps on staying shitty it's fucking may 21st we're a month away from summer solstice I woke up to fucking an inch of snow on the ground this morning. Now it's all this fucked up muck, bullshit, mud. And uh, it's probably going to be like this again tomorrow. So welcome to my shit show. Right now, I just got a couch for free. Because the couch inside is totally shredded. The dogs have just fucked it up. They have like chewed every remnant of fabric off of every surface basically that they can get their teeth on and they fucked it all up. So I found one on the highway today, but I reckon it's going to be quite a challenge to get it through my front door. So um, I've been driving my Ram around exclusively because I don't have any other vehicles that are running. Well, I kind of do. There is one vehicle I, I have yet to introduce, which, uh, which I, I'll probably just go ahead and do it. Fuck it. But right over here, we're sitting. The GMC is getting worked on. I, it's just fucking slow. I'm busy. I got to go to work every day. And uh, the only time I have to wrench on shit is like now when it's all fucked up like this. And I don't want to fucking lay on the fucking mud and wrench. That sucks. What I wouldn't give for a little concrete. This is my shop shed. This is where all the automotive action happens. Uh, you know, I do everything I can in here because it's the only fucking place that's out of the rain. It's not great. It's just a fucking pole barn and it's not even standing up straight. If you look, that pole right there is slowly encroaching inward as the land kind of pushes its way towards the building. And the same is true on this side, that's way worse. You can see that the rocks and the trees and shit just on the outside have been piled up with a backhoe and they've just sort of eroded. And this thing is like about a foot 
a foot and a half away from the footer where it was originally set. And so this barn is, uh, is slowly collapsing. Um, it's still pretty good. It's got these center beams. They're still pretty stout. The front ones haven't moved yet. But uh, the rear ones and the middle ones on the outsides have all shifted around. And so I'm reluctant to, um, to build actual walls into the poles and frame it up because of that. We'll essentially need to get out the backhoe and dig out all this bullshit dirt around it create a French drain because that's why it's getting fucked up because all the water rushes down the hill and it washes all kinds of mud and fucking bullshit in here when it rains hard like a flash flood there's a fucking river in here basically it sucks so um, yeah all these goddamn things need to be done when are you gonna do them when do I have time to fucking do them I gotta work all my spare time if I get a nice moment I gotta go make money I gotta go do something for somebody else so it's just kind of frustrating when you get this shit. Oh look, the sun came out. How long is that gonna last? I can see more clouds behind it, but this is kind of what I mean. You know, we don't even have nice days in Colorado. People want to move here. You need to realize that we don't even have nice days. We might have nice hours. We get nice hours. So like today, I wasn't planning on working today because I knew it was going to be pretty much fucked. Come about 1.30, all the snow melted, the sun came out, and the temperature shot up to almost 60 degrees. So I went to one of my landscaping clients and uh, did some weeding. Yep. That's how I make my money nowadays. Pulling weeds. Professional weed puller. But as you can see, I don't get the job done around here. Ain't that funny how it goes? I'm an auto mechanic that works on other people's cars and only have one vehicle running myself. I'm a carpenter who has about a dozen unfinished projects on his own house and a landscaper who can't keep up with his own yard. It's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, because I'm busy doing other people's cars, houses, and yards. <laughs> oh shit, man. It's just fun. It's a shit show. Look at all this junk. You got all kinds of shit. This is my landscaping section here. All this shit gets shoved into the back of my truck during the week when it's nice. And I go out and take care of people's uh, yards. Mostly zero-scaped yards with drip systems and all that good stuff because normally out here, it's a fucking bone dry desert. Right now, it looks like fucking Ireland. Because we've gotten an extraordinarily crazy amount of rain. This is like um, like a 25 year rain cycle that we're seeing here. Or something like we hardly ever get this much rain. I don't think I've ever seen this much fucking rain in my life here in Colorado. I'm almost fucking 40. So, but I've moved around a little bit, so I can't say that it's never happened in my lifetime. But, I mean, shit. There's so much shit going on. I got all kinds of projects that I can't fucking do when the weather sucks ass like this. Like, I've been trying to burn shit, get rid of some brush. I can't even light that shit on fire, because it's too fucking wet. But, um, I'll show you guys the... The vehicle I acquired, which I really don't know what the fuck to do with, to be honest with you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine who was moving to Tucson approached me and said he wanted me to uh, come over, look at his van, and see if I could get it going for him. And so I went over there, I checked it out, I said, yeah, it probably, probably can, it looks like it's almost there. It needed some belts and uh, some shit, you know, buttoned up on it, a few new parts. Uh, fuel line was uh, not complete, somebody had changed, like, you know, it was like half worked on. I guess the guy that was working on it had a stroke or whatever. Anyway, I got it work, running and driving for him, and uh, he took off, everything was great. 
So about three quarters of the way to uh, his trip, the fucking rear end grenaded on his ass. We didn't check that shit. Fuck. <sighs> so I felt really bad. And uh, offered to refund him, you know, what he had paid me for the work site. I mean, even though it wasn't my fault that the, 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 the rear end grenaded, it kind of was because I should have checked that. It's, it's just fucking obvious that you check the fucking rear end when you're going to fucking take a long road trip on a vehicle that hasn't run for two or three years. Like, So, yeah. So I felt awful about that. I mean, had the engine and transmission just they were solid, man. They were running, they were strong. It was a, it was a 1980 Dodge uh, Transfer. An old Dodge with a, a 5.9 uh, Dodge 360, basically, and a um, 727 Torque Flight transmission. And it was just a, a badass little RV that he bought. You know, it had been sitting for a while, but um, yeah, just didn't check the rear end and it fucking blew up. He had really good attitude about it. I mean, he just kind of let it go. It was going to be so much to fix that he just signed over the title to the tow company that they pulled it off the road for him. But uh, what he gave me in payment was this guy. This is a 1984 Dodge B350. It's a camper conversion that he did. Uh, my buddy Aaron, who I did the work for. And uh, so now I have this fucking van. I got this van here. I don't really know what the hell to do with it, but it needs work. I uh, I got all this fucking debt. I got like a fucking $900 vet bill to pay because my dogs, my puppies got parvo this winter and uh, they both had to be hospitalized for a night. And uh, I've just been fucking broke. I don't have the money to pay off the vet. All the money I make goes to vital bills like gas, food, um, insurance, and bullshit, and my ability to continue work. I have to keep reinvesting in my handyman business, my landscaping business, basically, to keep on working. You know, there's consumables, there's fuel, there's machine parts, you know, chainsaw blades. There's like all kinds of random shit that comes up that uh, I have to spend money on just so I can keep working. And, you know, that in a way kind of keeps me broke, even though I charge 20 bucks an hour, you know, uh, for my services. It's uh, at the end of the day, that money really doesn't go as far as it used to. Even, you know, there's just a lot of expenses that go along with doing what I do. And then you do shit like this and you're thinking, oh, OK, I'm going to make uh, a couple hundred bucks on this job. You know, all I did was tune his engine up. I didn't do any major work to it, just the few parts that it needed and, 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 uh, just made sure it ran. Okay. We didn't have to do much to it. So, um, he gave me this fucking van instead. So now I'm stuck with a van and, uh, I didn't get any cash from him at all. So instead of getting paid, I had to spend money to go register the damn thing because he made me sign the title in front of him. You know, normally I would just leave it blank and maybe pass it on to somebody else. But, uh, so I had to fucking register it. Um, so at least it's legal to drive and it's insured for a year. But, um, fuck, I don't know. Let's take a look inside and I'll show you what he did to it. And the fucking doors are locked. Well, you can see here. Uh, I've got the uh, doghouse pulled off here. And there's the old 360. Um, nothing really special about it. it. It's got a lot of high, it's high miles. It kind of sounds like shit. Like the valves probably need to be cleaned. Like it needs a valve job. And um, it runs and runs and drives. Uh, the smog system has been deleted on it. It's got an Edelbrock aftermarket carburetor. And uh, there's a few things on it that are fucked up. Like I busted off the PCV valve right here trying to remove it from the grommet because the grommet's all fucking hard. <laughs> and so, um, but it's pretty much all here. There's some shit that's fucked up. Like uh, this switch right here, it controls the wipers. Um, 
just doesn't work. It, it's on all the time unless you hold it like right here. I guess he had a, a cigarette butt sitting right there. So that when you turn it off, it'd sit just in the right spot and it wouldn't fucking be running all the time. So I'll have to fix this switch behind the dash there. Um, how many miles? It says 36,000. It's it's like 236. It's got a lot of fucking miles on it. Granted, they're highway miles. This thing recently made a trip to, um, to Tucson, Arizona and back. And um, so here I am. Fucking van. So I, I spent a bunch of money registering the dumb fucking thing, and then I uh, dumped another 150 bucks in parts and fresh fluids and shit. I've got an all synthetic transmission fluid in it, uh, fresh oil change with some Lucas oil, and um, I bought new gaskets because it's leaking like a sieve out of the out of this gasket right here, it's leaking all over the exhaust manifold. I went ahead and I pinched off the uh, the smog pipes on here. I'm looking for some uh, some pre-smog era manifolds. I was going to try to put headers on here, but as you can see, there's like literally no fucking room for headers. Like you would have to, like, even if you had them, you know what I'm saying? Like you it would just burn your fucking leg taking a highway trip or something. So uh, as cool as that might be to throw a set of headers on here and and make it kind of a hot rod van. It's just, I'm just gonna have to leave the fucking manifolds on there. But I do want to try to find some, um, some pretty small gear manifolds that I can throw on this 360. Because it's all fucking been deleted. There's no catalytic converter. It's just um, straight piped to a uh, to a glass pack. And it's a muffler in it. So it actually doesn't sound too bad. But it does, because the engine runs like shit. And it, you can you just hear the fucking <laughs> Yeah, it just sputters and fucking it. I don't, I don't like how it sounds. So um, I'm going to do what I can to try to make it run a little bit better. Um, the ignition and everything looked okay. But I don't really know what the fuck, you know, what's why it's running the way it's running. Because I just got it. I haven't really driven it. So I'm going to run some sea foam through it. And uh, like I said, new valve cover gaskets. So I'll take a peek at the valves. And uh, see how they're doing. If there's a bunch of fucking sludge in there, or if they're all carved up real bad, um, you know, I'll probably decarb the valves with some steam, and uh, go from there. Like I said, it runs and drives, but I don't even fucking want this thing. What the fuck am I gonna do with a van? <clears throat> Shit, what's that? I don't know. There's all kinds of parts and pieces on here now that I don't know where the fuck they went. That's probably not good. You start forgetting where shit goes. But that's the fucking return spring for the throttle body. Yeah, it's a hack job. I mean, there's fucking 12 gauge household wiring in here used as the ground for the fucking battery. I mean, from the alternator, it's just, there's, it's a hack job. It's a fucking hack job. However, <clears throat> in here, it's not too bad. I mean, we've got the fucking, this thing out here, this uh, couch thing rolls out into a uh, full-size bed. So, and it's got fucking shit, I mean, you know, space underneath for your stuff. This actually came out of the Transtar that I fixed in trade for this thing. He went ahead and took that out of there, put it in here. He's got a better setup than that thing now. Um, but, you know, it's kind of cute. It's all this wooden shit you know everything kind of works it's got the marine battery in here um, as you can see it's wired all fucked up I mean he just didn't use I mean I don't think that's why I want wire at all maybe it is but so we've got that um, kind of cool though a little bit of storage here got some drawer storage so I mean it's 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 like semi-livable there's no bathroom or anything like that but a guy could put a composting toilet in here if you got real ambitious and uh, you could add solar panels do shit like that um, in here you got the fucking water so you can go camping you know you got a little jug of water there little sink area here you get how this opens oh there's a hook right up in here 
Yeah, he's got a little sink right there and shit, so you can wash shit. Uh, it's kind of cool, you know. But, uh, definitely could use some work. That's kind of interesting. I wonder what the fuck that's for. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird shit I don't fucking get on here, but... Maybe that's supposed to go like that. Who knows, but... Potable water. It's just kind of... Amateur. You know? This is cool. Comes with a propane stove. Got your little storage area right there. Even got some gas that came with it. So you can uh, cook in here. You know? Set those out and fucking make some food. That would be kind of cool. So, it is what it is. There's no spare tire. I need to get one. But it's got 16 and a half inch wheels. So that sucks. So, I mean, it's a project for sure. It's got some work done to it, but it is definitely amateur. And it needs that, that professional touch. You know? It's kind of cool. It's got the shaggy carpets and shit like that. But, um, you know, it looks like everything was basically made out of stuff obtained at a yard sale. You know, like old fucking shitty walmart furniture and just cheap fucking bullshit <laughs> you know like <clears throat> straight metal it's not insulated or anything so you couldn't really fucking live in it you'd have to insulate it a little bit better so now this is what i fucking got um for working on another dodge so i got a dodge for working on a dodge and um so I'm trying to get this thing running right. <clears throat> Pretty sure the battery's dead on it. The AC's fucking disconnected. So I mean, all the fucking cool parts about it that you would want aren't fucking there. It sucks. So at least it has the original tape deck. <laughs> but yeah. That's it. Yep, so that's the Dodge. A buddy of mine gave me a lawnmower, which came in real handy for this landscaping business that I took over. Uh, that was something new this year, but the same guy that, that, that uh, gave me the van also gave me his business. He is a landscaper, has been a landscaper for four years. Nothing big, just uh, mostly maintenance, groundskeeping, lawn mowing. Pulling weeds and bullshit. Setting up drip systems. So that was kind of nice to get uh, someone's business and free lawnmower. The lawnmower didn't run though. I had to make it run. That was kind of shitty. Anyway, there it is. <laughs> Where it ran out of gas. It's not even out of gas, but I think the, the fuel line is clogged such a way that it will only run about half a tank of gas and then there's just not enough gravity pressure to continue. So, a couple more projects I've been working on. Got this fucking Pontiac right here, which I have been trying to recycle and uh, part out. Surprisingly, nobody wants any parts from it. Actually, I shouldn't be surprised. It's, uh, it's a Pontiac Sunfire Day body. GMJ body, and uh, I have learned that the, for the most part, that people that drive these cars don't fucking do any maintenance to them. They just fucking drive them until they're dead, and then they get rid of them. Nobody fixes these things, so uh, I'll probably just end up sending it all to the scrapyard. But I'm keeping some parts around for my buddy Zach, who has a J body Cavalier, and some of the parts are interchangeable. But um, for the most part, uh, it's just been used for target practice, you know, shooting, set things up on top right there and, and, and shoot them with my rifle. So, fun times. Yep. I think the, uh, the transmission is still good. The engine is shit, especially since I let it sit out all fucking, all winter. It got water inside of the cylinders. It's, it's 
fucked up. It's done. It probably won't even rotate. So, and over here, this is our this is our recycle pile. We recycle everything. I do a little bit of electronics recycling on the side because you know it's just when you, when you do handyman work, a lot of it is just cleanup, general cleanup, and you just get shit from people that they can't, they don't know what to do with. So um, I do electronics recycling, dismantle the shit. I've got piles like um, old TVs and shit. I have to take those down to, uh, there's a facility here. That's the only thing I have to pay for. So I do charge, you know, for people that have those types of things. But for the most part, um, you can, it's all metal. You can take it down to the local metal salvage recycling center here. We have Recla Metals and um, just take it there and recycle it. Over here we have our Volvo. Somebody got really angry with this Volvo. Um, I guess it, he was mad at his girlfriend or whatever. And so he fucking hit like a big ass rock going like 60 miles an hour or some shit like that. Took out the, the oil pan and the radiator. So uh, this thing needs a new, uh, a new radiator and a new engine. There's the oil pan right there. So the oil pan or the engine's just sitting in there without a bottom. And it's got all kinds of dust and shit in it by now. The front clip is fucked. Looks like we got a few dents right there from something that fucking will need to be changed out. But other than that, it's a nice car. It's not mine, though. It's my buddy's. So I'm going to work on it, though. Then over here, we got this fucking thing. All these fucking vehicles. And they don't even run. But I'll fix that part. I just can't get to them all at the same time. The blue truck that I was driving last year died. The transmission failed on it. So um, what I'm going to end up doing is uh, taking the whole the engine and transmission out. I'll rebuild the transmission while it's out or have it rebuilt. Whatever. And um, I'll take the engine and swap it into my brown truck which needs an engine right now and uh i have the other engine still to rebuild and i have a lot of parts to rebuild it but i don't have the necessary tools and the appropriate facility to rebuild an engine so i am going to just swap it for now and uh, we'll see what happens i might sell the block i might junk it i don't know uh, but for now i've got a perfectly good 350 sitting in a truck that can't go anywhere and I have another truck with a perfectly good transmission and drivetrain that needs an engine, so why not fucking make the best of it? <laughs> Over here is our cave. Not everybody has a cave on their property. Wow. Check it out. It goes far. Man, that's gonna be a bitch. Fuck. See, we use this cave to store our fucking um, our shit. No, our metal is now fucking dead. That is not gonna be fun to recover. There's like fucking five or ten tons of rock. That has collapsed on all of our uh, metal. Or I should say my, my friend Ben's metal. This is the metal that he has to make um, elk squeezes and other farm implement. So, you know, we're, we're in Colorado and his family raises elk. <clears throat> if you look at that, that used to be the ceiling. So back out here, this is an old coal mine shaft, by the way. See, that's, those are the supports right there. And all of this shit has just fallen down over time. This is just this winter. We put all this metal back here last fucking summer. And so all of that stuff is, uh, is fresh cave-in, basically. And this stuff right here is super fucking loose. In fact, I'm not even going to touch it because I'm like literally right underneath a bunch of fucking sandstone that could come down on my head at any minute. So, I mean, it's crazy. And this stuff is just super soft shale. I mean, if you touch this wall right here, just so much as touch it. I mean, you'll knock a whole bunch of shit down. It's just super loose 
shale. And then you can see a coal vein right there. You know. And that vein is just keeps going on right out here. And so if you want coal, you can just come out here and grab yourself some. It just comes right off the fucking ground. It's not the best. It's super dirty. <laughs> not clean coal at all. But uh, it does burn. I've burned it before. It fucking stinks and it takes a while to light. You know, it's not like when you buy coal, nobody buys coal anymore. But if you buy coal, it's usually covered in uh, oil. So it's easier to light. But um, this is not the kind of coal you want to burn. But, you know, if we have to, we can. We've got a fucking endless supply of it. <clears throat> so, crazy. That's our cave. And in the shop here, I'll show you what's going on with the GMC. I got halfway into it and I'm just like, I'm going to do a head gasket. And then I'm like, nah, I think I'll just rebuild the whole fucking thing. And then I'm like, nah, that's too much. Let me just pull the engine out and swap it. But here's what we got going on. There's the block. I got it all torn down. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'll take the engine out now. Well, uh, it should be a little easier to remove at least. <laughs> I just have to figure out where I'm going to hook my chain. I'll leave the transmission in there. Uh, probably change out the uh, uh, torque converter since I'll have it all opened up. And uh, the front suspension needs attention. There's a couple of axle seals that need to get changed. I'll take care of those while the engine's out. Um, so it's going to be kind of fun um, doing this this uh, engine swap by myself. Um, I realized that this thing here is a piece of shit. And as you can see, it's leaking like a fucking Sith. It's been leaking on the ground. So... Uh, I was barely able to complete the engine mounts on my truck with this stupid shop crane because that jack is fucking shit. It needs a new, it needs a new jack. You know, it's a, it, yeah. So I've got a, uh, a mechanical hoist over in my wood yard, which I'm gonna drag over here, drag and put over this thing somehow. I'll probably have to pull the truck. I might have to pull the truck back a little bit. Or, or even move the truck like somewhere else outside and um, and do it that way but so essentially I'll have to position the, the, the engine lift over the engine get it out get it out of the way and then like drag the truck out of the way and then haul the old engine off with my uh, with my Dodge and then I'll bring the other truck over here um, it still runs and drives but only in low and first gear, so that's it. No reverse and no no second, third. Um, so it does move at least. And I'll get that thing put over here. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll yank the engine and the transmission out of that one. And just keep the engine intact as much as possible. Uh, obviously the front accessories uh, I'll need to take out for the most part. I'll keep a lot of it though, like it's newer shit, so I'll, you know, as much of it as I can I'll keep. Um, I'm pretty sure the AC system on this is fucked, but I'll have to have it checked after we do the engine shit, so that's what's going on with this. Um, this engine is pretty much a lost cause at this point, it's been sitting out like this for about two months now. And so, even though I've sprayed it down a couple times with WD-40, um, I'm sure the moisture has gotten into it, and it's just, it's going to need a full, full fucking rebuild. Like, I'm going to have to take it to a machine shop, they're going to have to fucking hot tank it, magna flux it, check it for cracks, inspect it, all that good shit, and probably machine it. Um, the cylinder walls look great, thanks to fucking fuel injection. Uh, even with the high miles on this thing, there's, there's no scoring or uh, signs of gas washing or anything like that that you would see on older engines of carbureted cars and trucks. So, for all the guys out there that don't like fuel injection, well, that's the fucking main advantage of fuel injection is the longevity of your fucking vehicle. Unless you have direct injection. That direct injection sucks, but these old throttle bodies are awesome. They're just awesome. Anybody 
disagrees, well, you just fucking know it. Computers or electronics. It's a really stupid fucking simple systems. So, uh, managed to get this nice couch inside. Spike loves it, dude. Look at him. He is loving it. He's just like, this is awesome. I love this couch. I hope you guys can make it last. The other one was shredded, as you may or may not have thought. Everything's gone, so. Don't ask me how I got this massive couch through this tiny little door. That's a little trade secret of mine. I did it all by myself. I didn't have any help. Just with the dogs here and a few simple machines. But, um, yeah, there are ways to get giant couches inside tiny 30-inch mobile home doors. Yep. And, uh, they made it, yeah. And it's actually not even that heavy for a reclining couch. Um, I wonder if the reclining works. Uh, oh, no, no. Sweet. Get out of the way, Tina. Sweet, it kind of works. Nice. Actually, yeah, it works great. So, dogs, are you guys happy? Are you a happy pup? He's happy. Look at that spike. Spike is happy. Oh, yes, he's happy too, but he's always happy. He's always happy. Look at him. He has so much puppy energy, it's crazy. They all do. You guys like the new couch? You digging it? Good bull. Yeah, it's good dogs. Good dogs. All right, so yeah, I got my couch in. Cool. Anyway, next time. Peace. Peace, peace, peace.